So now we're going to do the first information security project and that's the stock price checker. And to get started with this, you just want to go to the uh, GitHub repository and just click code here and then grab this HTTPS clone URL. And I'm going to be using glitch for this just because of the way it handles IP addresses. So you just want to click new project here, import from GitHub and just paste it in right there. And that will start downloading the project from the repo um, so that we can have it on glitch. Now this one, once it loads up, I'll show you. All it allows you to do is you can enter in the name of some NASDAQ stocks and it will basically fetch the price for the stocks. And there's also this functionality where you can like the stock and it will have a number of likes added to it. Um, I don't even think the example is working, but that it's basically the amount of people that have liked it. I guess it's just a counter um, and it logs a number of IP addresses that have liked it. So you can't like it twice from the same IP. Um, I see no point in that whatsoever. It just makes it so much more complicated. The fact that they added this likes functionality in it, it makes no sense to me, but we have to do it anyway. So yeah, the, the example doesn't seem to work. So what we have is in public, it's just a style sheet, which hasn't been filled in. Um, we're going to be doing most of our code in, um, in roots and then api.js. And we have this one root slash api slash stock price slash get. And this is the root that we're going to be filling in. This whole app runs just from one get root. FCC testing, don't worry about it. Um, unit tests, we don't have any. We do have, um, I think it's six functional tests, five functional tests that we need to fill in, which we will do as well. Um, in views, we just have index.html, which is the home page of our app. And to view the home page, remember, it's just the glitch live app link. And you can just open a new tab and paste it in, and that will load it up right there. So this is the home page right here. So that's index.html. Then in env, we're going to add our database password and, and node underscore env to test to run the tests. Um, don't worry about most of these. This is readme.md and we have package.json. And um, the server.js is basically an express app and then it runs this um, API roots function right here, which is just basically um, api.js and it basically runs this function right here to attach our get root. So that's what we're going to be doing. So now that we have this live app ready, what you can do is you can just select that and go ahead and submit this. And it's got zero testing whatsoever, so it'll pass with just that, but we are going to do it properly. So now that we have the project ready, let's get started. So the next thing we're going to be doing is setting up the database connection. And if we were just fetching the price using this API that they've given us, we didn't have to do this, but because they've annoyingly added this stupid likes functionality and we do have to have a database to track the number of likes on each stock. So yeah, we do have to do a database connection. And to do that, I'm going to be using MongoDB and Mongoose to do this. So the first thing you want to do is you just want to update MongoDB to the latest version. So you just open up the uh, glitch terminal and we're just going to be installing the latest version of MongoDB once it loads up. There we go. So you want to do npm install MongoDB and you just want to go with the latest version. And um, I couldn't get the example project to work, but I managed to recover the old glitch link before they moved it to Repl.it and this one does seem to be working. So at least we do have the example to look at. So this will take a while, but we will get the latest version of MongoDB. And where we're going to be doing our database connection is in api.js and what I'm going to do is just get rid of these two lines for now. And first thing I'm going to do is import mongodb so I'll say let mongodb equals require and the package name is just mongodb like this. Um, let's see where this is at so this is still installing and the next thing we're also going to be importing here is mongoose which we haven't installed yet but we're going to install it soon so we want to say let mongoose equals require mongoose all right so that's installed now so the next thing we want to do is install mongoose so npm install and we want to do mongoose at latest as well at latest there we go so that will install the mongoose as well and what you also want to do is in your environment variables you want to add a variable here called pw or just some name here and you want to put your database password in here and i'll put my real database password in here soon um in addition to that 
what we also want to do is create a database for the stock price checker. So just go into your MongoDB Atlas and go into the clusters. And what you want to do here is click create database and just give it a name. So I'm just going to call it stock underscore price underscore checker. And for a collection name, just put stocks for now. But again, Mongoose will create the collection name for us when the time comes. So just wait for that. So once Mongoose is installed as well, you want to run the refresh command in the terminal and that will basically refresh this. And if we take a look at, at package.json now, we should see that MongoDB and Mongoose, the latest versions, should have been installed. So go back into api.js and what you then want to do is you want to create a variable here for the database URI and I'm just going to call this URI equals. And what you want to do is get your connection URI from MongoDB. So just go back to your clusters and then click on uh, connect. And then it's going to be connect your application and then Node.js 3.6 or later and just copy this. And you want to paste this into here and then you want to bring in your password from your environment variables. So, so I'm going to say plus process dot env dot pw. And what you also want to do is fill in the database name of the database we just created and it was stock underscore price underscore checker. And I think that should be everything we need to do. No, the final thing we have to do is connect to the database. So once we have this URI and we have MongoDB and Mongoose installed and imported, what you want to do is just after we've declared this URI right here, we can call the mongoose.connect method and give this URI as the first argument and then the options object as the second argument. And once we've done that, we should be connected to the database. So now that we've got the database connection set up, the next thing we're going to do since we're working with mongoose is create a schema and a model to represent our stocks. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a schema and what I'm going to call this schema for now is just stock schema. So in the api.js just after your database connection say let's stock schema and remember the constructor for a schema is a new mongoose.schema like this and inside it you give an object with the various properties and their types and in terms of the stock, what we want to store is we want to store the name of the stock. The whole point of this database is just to track the number of likes and the IP addresses that have liked it. So we want to have a name, which is a required string, which represents the name of the stock or the symbol. So for, for example, for Microsoft, it would be MSFT. And then we have likes, which is a number of IPs that have liked it. Again, it makes no sense to me. And then we have IPs, which is an array of strings. And this will store the IP addresses of people who have liked this stock before to make sure that they're not allowed to like it again. The next thing we're going to do is create a model from the schema. And I'm just going to call this model stock. And what you want to do here is you want to do uh, call the mongoose.model method to create a new model. And the name of the model, so this is the mongoose name, is stock. And this stock will be used to create a stocks collection in our database later. And what we want, the schema that we want to give this stock is the stock schema that we just created right there. So now we've created the stock model where we can have a name, number of likes, and an array of IP address strings that have liked it. And then we can use this to create documents in our database. Get started with the tests. And we're going to do the first test now. And what it says is that we should set a content security policy to only allow loading of scripts and CSS from our own server. And to do this, we can use Helmet's func middleware to set these headers. So what you want to do first is you want to check if Helmet's installed. So if we look at package.json, we can see the Helmet version 3.1.0 is currently installed. And for our purposes, that should be what we need. And then what you want to do is if you look at readme.md, it says that security features need to be added to server.js. So you want to go to server.js. And first thing we want to do is import helmet. So we'll say let helmet equals um, require. And the package name for helmet is just helmet like this. So we have helmet uh, required right here. And the next thing to do is set up the content security policy. And we want to mount this for all routes. So the way we do that is we say app.use. And what I'm just going to do this after body parser here. And the method we use for this is once we've imported helmet, we'll say helmet.content security policy. And inside this, you give it this object, which has this directive 
objects key. And inside that, you want to set up another object. And we have script src, which has an array of where scripts can be loaded from. And inside this, we just want to put inside quotations and then inside quotations again, self, which means it's only allowed from our own domain. Then we also have style src, which is where CSS style sheets may be loaded from. And again, you want to give this an array with a string with this self right here. Um, I go through the content security policy in a lot of detail in the challenge video, but as far as we're concerned, that's all we need to do here. Now, to make sure that this is applied, what I'm also going to do is in the terminal, I'm just going to run the refresh command just to ensure that our app gets restarted. So just wait for that to happen. Okay, so that should have been restarted now. And if we open up the um, developer tools here, and we click on network here and we just want to reload this and what you want to do is if you just if you just click one of these uh, responses right here then we click on header and uh, we scroll down a little bit it might not be in this one actually if, okay if we do this one right here um, it should be in the headers, um, response headers. It might take a while for it to be applied, but I think it should be applied like fairly quickly. Hmm. You also want to check the logs. It might just take a while to be applied, but as long as we have um, all of these installed right here and we have this uh, content security policy set up, it should only allow um, loading from specific places. And yeah, that should be applied soon. All right, so what I did was I just uh, right click this and click empty cache and hard reload. And now if you look at the uh, response headers, you can see that the content security policy has been set and we have script set to self and style set to self. And also because it's jQuery right here, um, it's being loaded from somewhere else. We can see that it's actually been uh, blocked by the content security policy. So we know that it's working because if we look right here, it came up in red. So what we're going to be doing now is I just want to talk about the structure of our code because um, we're using database calls in this and we have several calls. So we have a database call and then we have um, an XML HTTP request async call to this uh, API to get us our stock price as well. So because of these async calls, um, we can't always just write out code in a logical order and then think that it will follow that order. So we'll, we have to enforce the order ourselves. And what I've done is I've just came up with this uh, flow chart of how this is going to go. And this looks a bit complex now, but um, once we write our code, we'll be filling in various parts of this flow chart so that everything works together. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just talk through this flow chart and then talk through some of our code. So in, again, all of our code is going to be done in api.js and it's going to be inside this app.root part right here. So the first thing we have is a response object and this response object is basically the object that will be json back. So for example, if I put this into the example app, uh, we should see once it loads up that we have a JSON response and that's what this response object right here is going to be. And if you look inside the response, all of the uh, stock information and stuff goes in this field called stock data um, right here. So this is why we have this stock data field being set to an empty object as well. Then we have this two stocks variable and this two stocks variable just basically keeps track of whether we're working with one stock or two stocks because we have options to give one stock right here or two stocks. So we just have this variable to keep track of what's happening. Then we have the output response function and that's this part of the flowchart right here and that's at the very end. And what that basically does is it just returns um, it, as a JSON the response object. So that's when we'll have a result outputted like this. We have the find or update stock and what this does is it will take in the name of a stock or a symbol. It will take in an object which contains properties to update the stock in the database. And this is mainly to set the number of likes. And um, that's uh, this part right here, find or update stock document. And since we have to enforce our order ourselves, in each of these functions which represent these blocks, we have this next step as well. So that's the next step to take after that. 
We also have likes doc and what likes doc basically does is it will check set the document update to increment the like count by one and add the IP to the IP address and then it will call the find or update doc. So that's the like stock right here. We have get price which is this part right here and that will take a stock document from the database which has been found and then it will fetch the price using the uh, the free code cam stock price API. And then we have process one stock and that basically it sets the fields inside the stock data right here depending on the information from our database and from the uh, stock price API. And then we have process two stocks which basically does the same thing but this time it does it for two different stocks. So if I gave two stocks like this, um, hang on. Yeah, this time what it needs to do is fill in an array and it should give two stocks right here. So that's this right here. Then what we have is we have a, we have this check right here, whether it's one or two stocks. And if we have two stocks in the query, what happens is that the request.query.stocker becomes an array that has two entries. So if it's equal to a string, that means it's one stock. So we want to go down this route. And if it's an array, which means there are two stocks, we want to make sure that we go down this route. And that's what this does right here. Again, it looks very complicated right now. And um, what, like I said, we'll be working through this flow chart throughout this project. So this is going to be the um, order of our flow. And I'm just going to double check my notes to see if there's anything I failed to mention. Um, yeah, so we have, and if again, if you check the written guide, you can see the, um, the descriptions of exactly what each of these methods is going to do as well. Um, I'm quickly just going to run through the flowchart once again. So what we're going to be working on this side for now. So the first thing we're going to do is see if there was a request or query to like the stock or not. And if that's not the case, then we'll find the stock document or we'll create a stock document. Then we'll um, get the price for that stock. Then we'll build up a response and then output that response. So now that we have a basic order of how things are going to go. Again, it looks very complicated right now, but you'll see how it all works soon. Um, we're ready to get started. So now we're going to be looking at completing the second test. And what it says is that I can get um, and then go to the root slash API slash stock prices with um, data containing a NASDAQ stock ticker and receive back an object stock data. So this root is something like this. So we'll have slash API slash stock prices question mark. And then we'll have a query with the stock right here. And this stock is a NASDAQ symbol that we can use to find the price. So if I press enter right now, nothing should happen because we don't have a root set up. So we're going to start working now. And what we're essentially going to be doing is this root right here. So we're going to be doing this root right here. So the first thing we have to do is the one or two stocks. And this time we're working with one stock. And when we only give one stock in the query like this, so just the stock equals goog part, um, this request or query dot stock is going to be a string. So we know that we are working with one stock right here. So the first thing to do is this check right here to determine whether we're liking the stock or not. And the way we would do that is firstly, we want to take the name of the stock from the uh, request query. So what I'm just going to do here is say, um, let stock name equals requested.query.stock. So if we were to run this query right here with stock equals Goog for Google, um, the stock name will be equal to the G-O-O-G Goog part. Okay, so we have the stock name now. And the next thing we want to do is um, basically, we're not worrying about the likes part for now. So we're just going to go down no for this route. And we want to find or update the stock document. And what we want to do is we want to run the find or update stock method right here. And this takes in a stock name, which we have right here. And it also has a document update, which is the objects that we want to set the properties with. And then we have um, the next part to run after that. And the next part to run after that is going to be get price right here. And um, where are we at? Um, so the document update by default is if we give an empty object for now, um, it will do nothing because we're not worrying about liking the stock right now. So we're just going to do um, document update and give an empty object. So what this will essentially do is it will 
a tem, it will call the find or update stock method and it will give it this stock name right here. It will also give it an empty object as the update object. And then it also tells it the next thing to run, which is the get price method right here. So that's that part done. So the next thing we need to do is fill out this um, find or update stock method. And the find or update stock method is basically going to either find and retrieve a stock document with the stock name we provided and optionally if if the document object um document update object is provided it will also update the um properties of that object so for example increasing the likes but we're not doing that right here and um so what that's what we're going to be doing here so i'm just going to copy and paste this and then i'll explain what's happening so if we go to uh, find or update stock so it's this part right here so this is where we want to do our methods so what this essentially does is it calls the uh, mongoose find one and update method and for the first argument which is the document that we're trying to find we want the name to be equal to the stock name right here the second argument is basically the um object containing the updated decide properties and this is just the document update and remember that we're giving an empty object right here the next thing we want is an options object and the new true part make sure that once the stock document's been updated we get the new stock document back and by default it returns the old one for some reason but we want to make sure we get the new one back and even more importantly we want to set upset to true and what that does is if that's if a document in the database for that stock doesn't already exist it basically makes sure that it gets created and then we have a callback function which takes in an error and then the stock document from the database and if there was an error we want to log the error otherwise if there was no error and we got back a stock document so this has either been fetched from the database or it's just been created um, what we want to do here is if the two stocks boolean which by default is false and we're just working with one stock we want to basically run the next step and remember that as the next step we gave get price right here and this is get price right here and what we want to do here is to get price we want to give the stock document which we've given right here and then the next step after the stock get price method right here is going to be the process one stock method which is this right here so that's what we've given uh, right here so the next part is filling in the get price method and for now, we're not going to be fetching the price. Um, we're just going to be moving on to the next step. So what you want to do in the get price method is you just want to run the next step. And the next step in this case is going to be process one stock. And that needs to take in a stock document again. And it also needs to take in the next step that it's going to run. And after um, process one stock, we want to make sure that we output the response. So the next step this time is just going to be output response. And um, finally, I think we have to do the output response method part. Um, no, we have to do stop process one stock next. So if we go to process one stock, um, Let's see what's happening here. So what we want to do here is we want to set the response object stock data stock field. So if I were to go to something like stock equals Goog, for example, we can see that um, in the stock data, um, not sure what's happening here. Try this one. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, yeah, we want to set the uh, stock field of the stock data to be equal to the um, name field from the stock document. And remember that the name field is created from the request query. And then we want to run the next step. So that's what we want to do here. Again, this is not going to make much sense for now because it hasn't been implemented. Um, I find this project really confusing, to be honest. It's very hard to like get your head around it. Um, and then the next step in this case, what we did was in the get price, we said output response will be the next step. So that's this part right here. And we've already uh, filled that in, so we don't have to do anything there. So let's let's talk work through this entire process now. So I'm just going to pull this out again, and then we're going to compare the code to the, the flowchart to see what's happening here. So if I push that there, and then I move that, and then I move 
this a little bit like this. Okay, so the first thing that happens is um, when we have the uh, a slash APS slash stock prices, we'll give a name of the stock, like stock equals Goog here. And what we've done here is we've determined whether it's one or two stocks because if the request or query dot stock is a string like this in this case, so the request or query dot stock is equal to Goog in this case, um, we'll do this part right here. And we've set the stock name to be equal to request or query dot stock. So the stock name is the Goog right here. Then we've basically set document update to an empty object. And then we've given this stock name to the find or update stock, which is this right here. And then if we look at find or update stock, what we do is basically we create a stock document or we retrieve a stock document with the name, that's the stock name that we gave it. Um, we update it to the properties that we have in document update. And in this case, we're just giving an empty object, which means it won't update anything. Then we set the options object, which is new to true to return the new document and absurd to true to create it if it doesn't exist. And then if there's no error and we get the document back, what we want to do is run the next step, which in this case is get price right here, and we'll give it the stock document. And what this get price method will eventually do is it'll fetch the price. But for now, we're just passing along the stock document to the next step, which in this case is process one stock right here. So that's this right here. Then what this does is it st sets the stock field of the stock data of the response object to the name from the stock document that we obtained. And finally, it runs the next step, which is the um, output response right here, and it just JSONs back the response right there. So let's test it all out. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to work. So if I just copy all of this, um, I'm also going to open up the uh, logs just to make sure that I can catch any errors um let's clear all of this and if i just put in this right here we can see that we have a stock data right here and we have stock goog right here returned back to us so as of right now it just returns back the um, name of the stock and if we were to go ahead and oops if i was to go ahead and refresh this uh, stock price checker collection we can see that inside the uh, stocks um collection right here we do have an object for the google stock created right here again this is only partially completed and after the next step and um, we'll be getting the prices for this as well but as of right now what we have is we have um we have an ob a stock data object that's been returned right here so that's the second test completed all right, so now we're going to do the third test. And what it says is that in the stock data, which is this right here, um, I can see the stock, which is the ticker as a string. So we have that already done. Um, the, the price as a decimal in a string format, and then the number of likes, which is an integer. And we haven't implemented the ability to likes uh, to add the likes yet, but we will show the number of likes, which should be zero by default. And the first thing we're going to be doing is modifying this get price method right here. So as of right now, it will take a stock document and then it will just pass it along to the next part. And what we want to do instead is we want to make sure that we fetch the price um, of the stock. And the API that we're going to be using to fetch the prices of the stock is this right here. So it's this um right here so what we'll do is we what we can essentially do is we can make get request to this uh, free code camp stock price url and if i put in a stock symbol like this for example and press enter we can see that we get a bunch of information about the stock but most importantly we'll have this field in this um i can't find it right now but there is a field in it called the latest price and that's the price or the value of the stock um as of now and that's what we want to return and we can do that in the browser, but um, to do the get request from within here, what we're going to be doing is using an XML HTTP request. And it's available in client-side um, JavaScript by default, but it's not available in the browser by, in, sorry, it's available in the browser by default, but it's not available in um, Node projects by default. So we're going to be um, installing a module, if I can open the terminal properly, 
we're going to be installing um, an NPM module to do this. And it's basically called XML HTTP request. And it basically allows us to use the browser XML HTTP request, but inside of Node right there. So what you want to do is in the glitch terminal, you want to do NPM install. And you want to install, oops, um, XML HTTP request. Um, this might crash actually. We'll see what happens. There we go. So we want to install XML HTTP request. And what we also want to do is we want to require it because we're going to be using that. And I'll just copy and paste this and I'll show you how that works. So after Mongoose, just say let XML HTTP request equals. And you want to do require and then give the package name, which is XML HTTP request. And then you want to take the constructor from it, so which is also called XML HTTP request. So here you want to do um, XML HTTP request dot XML HTTP request. It's essentially the browser XML HTTP request, but it's got a very complex um, set to structure on node for some reason. So the next thing you want to do then is we're going to be modifying the get price method to make a request to that uh, stock URL and get the price back. So the first thing you want to do is inside the uh, get price, um, which is right here, um, you want to say before that we call the next step, we want to say let um, XHR equals new and um, it's XML HTTP request, but I always spell it wrong. So I'm going to copy and paste it from here. So we want to create a new XML HTTP request. Then what we want to do is set up the URL for our request. And I'm just going to call it a request URL. And the request URL that we want to set up is basically the uh, free code camp um, stock price checker URL. So if I just copy and paste that, so it's basically what's um, in here, this one right here. And instead of the um, stock symbol being given right here, what I have instead is, oh, this is finished now, so you just want to run refresh. Um, what I have instead is remember that we created a stock document in our database and the name field of that stock document, which gets given along to here, um, contains a symbol or the name of the stock from our request query. So we can just push that into there. So we have stock document name. Remember, get price takes in the stock document. Then we want to open up this request and set some properties. So you want to say xhr.open. And the first argument is the method. And the method in this case is just um, get. So we just want to put get here. The second argument here is um, the URL of our request. And remember that we created a request URL right here. So you, you just want to go with a request URL here. And the third argument is whether to run this asynchronously or not. And we should run it asynchronously. So set that to true. Then what we want to do is set the onload. So xhr.onload. And this is what the function that will be executed um, with the response once it's been completed. There we go. And what we will get back is remember that we'll get an API response. And that's basically what was shown in the browser earlier. And we want to set um, this to a variable for now. And we want to pass the JSON into a JavaScript object. And remember that I said um, the price will be stored in a field of the response called the latest price. So what we want to do is we're going to set the stock documents price field um, so we have a stock document right here. We're going to set its price field to the um, latest price field from our API response. And I'm going to say call the to fixed method. And what that does is it rounds it to the number of decimal places you give it, which in this case is two, and then it converts it into a string. So we've got a price field added now. And after we've added the price field, what we want to do is then call the next step. So we're ready to move on once we've got the price. So I'm going to move that into here. And the final thing we need to do is make sure that we send the XML HTTP request. So we want to make sure that we call the send uh, method right there. So again, remember, get price will take in a stock document from the database, which contains the name and the number of likes and the IPs. And what it will do is create a new XML HTTP request. It will send the request URL to the free code cam stock price checker URL. Sorry, the stock price API. 
and it'll, instead of the symbol it will add in the name which is the basically the symbol of the stock that we got from the stock document right here and then what it does is it sends it off and once we have a response back the latest price field of the response will contain the price of that stock we want to convert that to two decimal places convert it to a string then assign it to this price field of the stock document and then pass the stock document along to the next step so again this will receive a stock document from the database add in the price field containing the price and then give it along um, to the um, process one stock method so now that we've got the price um, it also says that it wants us to see the um, price in the response as well as the number of likes so we just want to set those fields up as well so inside the process one stock so we're working at this part right here um, after setting the stock field which contains the name of the stock we also want to make sure that we set the price of the stock and the likes of the stock and you might see that in the database that we don't have a likes field remember we got the price field from this part right here but we don't have a likes field and because when we created the model, we set the likes to default to zero. Mongoose will automatically fill in zero if it doesn't see a likes field. And then we'll basically call the next step again, which will run the output response. So once we've done all of that, if I were to refresh this now, what we'll see is that we have the price added in right here in the get price part. And then we also have the number of likes, which is returning zero for now. So yeah, that's basically this test completed. We can see the name or the symbol, the price and the number of likes. So that's that done. But the final thing that we have to do is make sure that we write out a functional test for this. And we have a functional test right here that we're going to fill out. And I'm just going to copy and paste this um, because I want to save some time, but I'll explain what it's basically doing. So just paste this into here. Whoops, forgot to copy it. copy hopefully it should work this time so we want to replace this with this all right so what this does is again it's using chai http it makes a request to slash api slash stock prices like this like this part right here it puts a, a query as a stock being google or g-o-o-g and it basically checks when we get the response back it checks that the response body's stock data stock field is equal to the google part right here it sets, checks that the price field, which is this right here, is not null. So we have a price return. And it also checks that the number of likes right here um, is also not null. And once if all of those are okay, then what it will do is it will call done and then move on to the next test. So yeah, now that we have the uh, price and the number of likes being returned when we query stock, that should be test three completed right there. All right, so now we're going to do test four, and what it says is that I can also pass along the field like as true. So we can have a in our query, we can have um, and like equals true like this. And what it should do is it should add increment the number of likes of that stock by one. And again, only one like per IP should be accepted. So since we're working with IP addresses, the first thing we have to do is enable the trust proxy property. Um, in here and this is why we used um, um, express rather than replit sorry glitch rather than replit because in replit I think all the apps go through a proxy or something because I was getting the same IP address all the time so that's why I'm using um, glitch for this and what you want to do here is just add it somewhere maybe um, just after helmet just add it, enable the trust proxy and that will basically allow us to get the true IP addresses so the next thing that we want to do is we want to do this part right here where we're checking if there's a like stock query or not. And I'm and I'm just gonna copy and paste this and I'll explain what's happening. So once we've um, grabbed the uh, request query, which is this part right here, um, what we wanna do here is by default, we wanna set the, oops, again, it hasn't copied for some reason. Um, copy right and then paste here okay so after we've got the uh, request query what we want to do is by default the document update is nothing which means it doesn't do anything um, and if there what we want to do is check if there's a request or query dot like so if this exists right here 
And if if it's and then if that exists, we want to make sure that it's set to true. So if this exists and it's set to true, then what we want to do is so this is yes right here. We want to make sure that we run the like stock function right here, and the like stock function basically um, it'll take in a stock name and then it will just uh, it also needs the next step to run after that. So we'll do like stock and then the next step that we want to run after that is find our update stock, which is what we've given right here. And else means that either the like query doesn't exist or it's not set to true. What we want to do is we we want to do the same thing we did before and we just want to um, run the find or update stock method and we just want to basically set, um, we just want to do what we were doing before. So we want to give the stock name, we want to give the empty document update and we want to do get price at the next step. So the next thing to do is implement the like stock functionality. And what this like stock will essentially do is it basically, it will set the um, document update object to increment the number of likes by one and also push the um, current um, request IP addresses to the IPs array. So let's do that. So what this is doing is it will f the first thing we want to do is make sure that the IP hasn't already liked that stock. So what we'll do is we'll find the um, stock the the document from with that stock name if it exists in the database, and if it does if it does exist and it it does have an IPs array, so that means it's been liked before, and the IPs array, um, so the stock documents IPs array includes the um, request IP address. So this means someone with this IP address has liked the stock before and the IP address exists in the IPs array. What we then want to do is we want to return the error message, error only one like per IP allowed. So, and then we have the else statement. So again, this is only running if we have a like query. So this means that either the stock document um, hasn't been created yet, so no one's viewed or liked the stock before, or the IPs array doesn't exist or it doesn't contain the current IP address. What we want to do is set the document update. And we want to use the increment operator right here. And then in this, we can give an object of what to increment. And we want to make sure that we increment the likes field by one. And again, the likes field is in our stock schema right here. What we also want to do is call the push operator and in this what you can do is give an object with um, an array to push to and then what to push to it. And we want to make sure that we push to the IPs array which is an array of strings and then we, what we want to push to that is we want to do, um, um, where were we at? I lost it. Um, yeah, we want to push the current request IP. And after we've done that and we've set up the document update, then what we want to do is we want to basically just want to call the next step again. And the next step in this case was the find or update stock document. And again, we're giving it the stock name. We're giving it the document update, which we've this time told it to increment the likes. And then again, the next step after that is get price. So again, to sum up what this like stock method does is if the current IP hasn't already liked the stock, and if that's the case, it will return an error message. Otherwise, what it does is it sets the document update up to increment the likes by one and to push the current IP to the IP's array. And then it will call the next step. So after those have been completed, what we can now do is try liking the Google stock. So if I copy this and paste this into here, press enter, um, and we wait for it, um, there might be a few errors. Uh, no, that's fine. We can see the number of likes has now been incremented to one and we've essentially liked it. So if we refresh this here, um, what we should find that is that, whoops, um, the like stock field has um, basically incremented the number of likes to one. There we go. So it was on zero before, and now it's up to one. And to the IPs array, we can see that my IP address has been pushed right there. And if I attempt to do this again from the same IP, we should see that error only one like per IP is allowed. So it's basically what it's done then is it's looked in the IP array, it's found that the request IP address is in there and it's returned the error message. But that's but I can like a different stock if I want to. So if I wanted to do um, MSFT or Microsoft, we can see that it works. If I attempt to like Microsoft again, it puts the error in. So yeah, that's basically the like stock functionality completed right there. The final thing that we have to do is basically write out um, 
functional tests for this. And we have two functional tests to write out here. And again, I'm going to copy and paste them, and then I will explain um, what's going on. I don't know why my computer is so slow. Um, so if I copy this, and again, we're in um, functional tests.js, so which is this one right here. And we're going to be filling out these two tests right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste over them. And what this does is if the first thing it does is it attempts to like the Apple stock. So we call the get root again. We set stock to Apple and then we set the like to true. And then what it does is it basically checks that the stock field that gets returned is equal to Apple and it checks that the number of likes is equal to one. Um, an important note here is that we have to reset or delete the Apple stock document every time Time you run this test otherwise it will fail then what it does is it attempts to do the same thing again and um, so it again attempts to like I do Apple and then like equals true and what it then checks is that the response bodies has our error message right here which is error only one like per IP allowed so yeah that's the um, one two three fourth test completed right there we can now like stocks and only one like from I per IP address is accepted all right, so now we're doing test five now, and what it says is that we can give two stocks, and the return object will be an array with information about both stocks, and it will return the relation likes, which is the difference between the likes on both. So, for example, um, if this decides to work eventually, what we can do is we can give two stocks right here, and the way we do that is we'll say and stock equals goo, and then we can also do stock equals, and then give another stock, and. Um, I don't think the example is working properly. Um, we will see. But we can see that stock data this time is an array that contains objects about the two stocks. And the relation likes is the number of likes. So the first stock has one like over the second stock, and this one has one less like, which is why this is minus one. And this is essentially what we're going to be setting up. So the first thing I want to show you is what the request query looks like if we use the same query twice. So if we use stock twice like this, I just want to show you what the request query looks like. So I'm just going to clear this for now. And for now, this shouldn't do anything. But if I press enter here, we can see that the stock um, query right here is actually an array that contains our two queries. So it's basically got the Goog and the MSFT right here. So we know that we're working with an array. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be going along this route now. So in the one or two stocks, we, we're working with two stocks right here. So we have this route. And the way we can determine that again is that um, if the request.query is a st dot stock is a string, that means we have one stock. But if it's an array, which is this part right here, we know that we're working with two stocks. And remember that we have this um, Boolean two stocks to determine whether we're working with one or two stocks, which I've declared right here, and by default it's false. And if if it turns out we are working with an array, it means we're working with two stocks. So we just want to set this to true. And what this does basically is it'll split off and it will do the first stock and it will and like it, update it, get the price. It will do the second stock and these will run um, side by side. And then once we have the prices and the um, likes and all the information for both stocks, they'll both be given to this function, which is process two stocks, and then it will be outputted um, as an array like this. So that's what we're going to be doing. So the first thing we're going to be doing is this part right here, where we wanted to branch off and basically um, process both of the stocks right here. So. Again, I'm going to copy and paste this here because it's going to take me a lot of time to write this up, but I will explain what's going on here. So once we've established that two stocks is true, what we're essentially doing is remember that we have an array now. So what we'll do is first we'll get this first stock from the array and we'll just basically do what we did here. So we'll like it if we need to like it. Or if not, we'll just um, run the find and update right here. And then we'll do the same thing for the second stock, which is at index one. So we'll either like it if we need to, or we'll do the find or update. And then we'll it'll basically go through the whole process of finding and getting the price, etc. etc. But the thing that we need to do here is once we've retrieved the stock document, um and uh, we're running the next step, which is the get price. Remember that the get price part needs to get take the next step that is going to run. And this time, the next step isn't the process one stock right here. It's actually the process two stocks right here. 
So what we want to do is um, when we're doing the find or update doc, which is this part right here, um, right here, and the next step in this case is get price. What we want to do is we want to put else here. So if this time it means that two stocks is true. And what we want to do is we want to say return next step, which again calls the get price method, which is this right here. And we want to give it this doc document again. But this time we want to make sure that the step after that, that it runs is the process two stocks method right here. And the next thing that we're going to be doing is filling in the process two stocks. Again, this will run side by side. So it'll run the process two stocks method twice. So if I scroll down here, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this again, and I will explain what is happening. So we're down here now. And what we're going to be having is, we have an array here called stocks, and it basically just keeps track of the um, number of stocks that we have. So we have stocks array right here. And then the process to stocks method is each time it's run, it'll take in a stock document like this. And what it will do is it will create a stock. So it will create a doc, a doc, an object for that stock. And it will set the stock part to the name. It will set the price part to the price. And then it will set the likes part to the um, number of likes that the stock has. And then it will push it to this array. So this array will eventually contain two um, separate objects which contain all the information from our stock. So the name, the price, and the likes. And then what we're going to be doing is once this, each time we do this, so each time we push something to this array, we check that if the length is equal to two. And the reason we have to do that is we can't predict when these two stocks will come in from the database. So we have to make sure that we put in a check here. And if that the length of the stocks array is equal to two, that means we've received information for both of the stocks. What we can then do is set the relation likes field. And the first stocks relation likes field is going to be um, the number of likes that that stock has take away the number of likes that the other stock has. And the same thing for stocks one. We want to make sure the relation like is stock one likes take away stock zero likes. And finally, what we do is we set the stock data field to stocks because remember the stock data has to be an array of stocks this time. So we set that to the stocks. And then we run the next step. And um, in this case, again, the next step would have been output response. So it will just output that response back. So I'm just going to remove this for now um, because it might throw an error saying that I'm tr attempting to like it from the same IP again. But if I put and stock equals Goog and stock equals MSFT now and press enter, we can see that um, we have, we are, oh, I already liked the Microsoft stock before. We have Microsoft price and then the likes and then num um, the number of likes that it has then we also have the google stock right here and it we can clearly see that it's done this in the separate so we gave it in the order of google microsoft but it's done it as microsoft google and that's what i mean that we can't predict the order that these will be completed and since the num since the microsoft stock has one like and google has zero likes if we do one takeaway zero we have the relation likes um, set to one here and for Google we if we do zero take away uh, one we have minus one set right here and now I'm also going to attempt to like it so I'm going to remove the Microsoft stock for now um, so that it, it doesn't throw an error and this time we'll, what it will do is it will run both of those and it will make sure it goes down the like true part this time and again we'll get both of them we'll fill up the stocks array and once that reaches two items we'll push that to the stock data of the response objects and then output that back out so what i'm going to do now is set the like equals true part here so i'll put unlike equals true and we can see that the microsoft stock has one like now and the Google stock also has one like, and the number of likes or the relation of likes between them is now zero because they have the same number of likes. So we have that done now. And the final thing that we need to do now is basically fill out the last two functional tests. And boy, these ones are very long. So um, it's definitely important that I copy and paste these rather than um, go through them very slowly. So. You want to drag all of that over, copy, and um, I'll explain what's going on here. So um, we want to go to the functional tests again, and let's remove all of this and then paste that in. And what we want to do is also push these along a little bit. So 
there we go. So what this does firstly is it attempts to query the stock prices for the Apple and Amazon stock. And I'll do that here just to show you what it's doing. So we'll put stock equals, um, so it'll put the que query as a, an array and it puts Apple and then Amazon in like this. So A M Z N. And I'll remove the like for now. So that's essentially the query that it runs. And then what it does is it checks, so it sets the stock data to response body stock data field, which is this right here. And it checks that the stock data is an array, which is this, which it is in this case. Then well, the reason we have this if else statement is because the remember, like I said, the array can come in either order. So this time it gave Apple back first and then Amazon second. But the, another time I do it, see, it's given me Amazon first this time and Apple second. So what I've done is if the first stock of stock data zero stock field, so if the first stock was Apple, then what I want to do is check that, um, again, the stock is Apple, the number of likes is one. And because remember that we should have liked the Apple stock in one of the previous tests. And then we'll check that the Amazon stock has zero likes. And then we'll check that this is plus one because it's one like greater than this. And this is minus one because it's one like less than this. And then we have the else statement. So this is if the Amazon stock comes first. And then what it does is basically checks that it, I've just changed the indexes. Over, so it checks that in the second item in the array, we have the Apple stock with one like and then in the first item in the array, we have the Amazon stock with zero likes. Again, if you just look over this test, you'll kind of understand what's happening. Then what it does is it attempts to like and query the Spotify and the Amazon stock. And this time we have the likes set to true. And remember that the Amazon stock's likes should be zero. So what it does is um, it checks that in either order that they come in, it checks that Spotify and Amazon both have one in their likes and the relation likes between them is equal to zero. And we can try this one out as well. So if I put um, AMZ, if I put spot here for Spotify, and then I also say stock equals Amazon, so I'm um, AMZN, and if I put like equals true, So um, that's this right here, and then press enter. All right, so what it's doing is it, it first checks that um, if stock data zero stock, so if the first item in the stock data stock is Spotify, which is, isn't in this case, so we'll move on to the else statement. Um, so then what it's doing right here is checking that at the first index we have Spotify, which is this right here. It checks that um, the number of likes is one, which it is, and it checks that the red likes, which is the relation likes is zero. And then it also does the same checks for Amazon, which is at index zero right here. And that's all the functional tests completed right there. So that's basically this test right there. You can give two up to, two stocks now, and you can also like them together as well. And we also have the difference between the likes displayed in this field right there. Now the next test that we have here is it, we don't have to do anything here. All it says is that to use this free code cam stock API to do our um, pricing. So don't worry about that either. And now we're finally ready to move on to the final test. All right, so the final test says that all five functional tests are complete and passing. So we're finally going to start doing the testing for this. And before you do the testing each time, since we're working with the Apple, Amazon, and Spotify stock and all of these, what you want to do is make sure that you delete the documents for that from your database before you start the testing. So you just want to run delete here. And what you also want to do is just refresh the database just to make sure that... Um, we don't have documents for Spotify, Amazon, or um, Apple. All right, cool. The next thing you want to do is, in the environment variables, you want to set um, node underscore env to test. So you want to add a variable here, and you want to say node underscore env. Don't worry, that's not my full password. It extends past that. And you want to make sure that this is set to test. And before you do that, make sure you clear your logs because the tests will be logged here. So what you want to do is quickly type in test here and then just pull up your logs. And that will basically start doing the testing when the app starts up. So just wait a few seconds. And um, this just means that it's processing uh, what we've just done. So it's going to start soon. There we go. So it says running tests. And you'll probably encounter an error when you first start to do this. And it says cannot find 
um, stockhandler.js and this is a problem with the free code camp boilerplate i feel like we should not be fixing this ourselves but despite there being no unit tests i think there was a plan at some point to add some unit tests in and we have this stock handler right here and it just doesn't work for now because it's not been implemented because it still tries to run the unit tests first so you just want to make sure that you comment out this entire thing right there Again, refresh your database to make sure that there's no um, Apple, Amazon or Google stocks created or whatever stocks you used for your testing. And once again, what I'm going to do is go into my environment variables, set this to test, save that and then just pull up my logs again and then wait for this test to start. So now it's starting to run the tests. Okay, so we have two passing now. Um, all right, so what I have to do now is, yeah, I have to go back and fix some of these tests because I've used assert.equals here and it should be assert.equal. So let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back. All right, so I've just fixed my test now. Um, I was using equals and methods like not null when it should be equal and is not null, stuff like that. So it's basically my fault for getting some of the method names wrong, but I should have fixed all the tests now. Mm -hmm. and it all right, so one quick tweak that we might need to make is in the uh, like stock method, um, if there was an error, instead of doing a rest.send like I did here, you might have to do rest.json because this seems to be throwing an error for some reason um, with the tests. And again, um, I'm going to be just restarting the test. So you just want to delete, 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 and delete, delete, delete. And once, just make sure that um, the stock documents don't exist. If you refresh that, there we go. So it's fine. And what you want to do is clear this, go into um, environment variables again. You know the process now, run the tests and pull this up. And hopefully um, we should see that everything should pass now. So there we go. We have all five tests passing now. Again, it's because I was using rest.send rather than rest.json on it. The test suite didn't like it. But yeah, that's basically the final test completed right there. And we've got all the functional tests passing. So I'm going to remove this now so it doesn't throw any more errors. And what I'm now going to do is do a bit of CSS styling. Um, there, there is a styles.css and I'm just going to do that and then come back. All right, so I've just added some CSS styling and I've cleaned it up a bit. So let's have a look now. I think it should look a little bit better. So um, if I just open this up. Yeah, we can see that I've cleaned up the interface a little bit. I've got a nice stock background right here. And we still have the get single price and total likes or get compare and get relative likes. So again, I can put a stock here like Google, click get price and it will return the Google's price back. Um, Again, there's a lot of work that can be done on the front end, but I just can't be bothered. Um, if I want to like the Microsoft stock, I can put MSFT, tick the like button, and then get the price. And we can see that Microsoft has now been liked. If I attempt to do this again, we can see that we have the error. I can compare Google and Microsoft, so I can put Google MSFT here, and then get the prices. And we can see that and Google has zero likes, Microsoft has one price, and Google is doing a lot better than Microsoft at the moment. Um, and then I can also try and like the Amazon and Apple stocks together. So Amazon and Apple, and I can tick the like both and then do that. And then we can see that both of them have likes now added. And um, these are from a separate um, IP. These are from my IP, the other ones for from the chai, so which is why these likes were allowed. And now we have two likes on both of them. So yeah, that's basically the entire uh, stock price checker completed. You can actually get um, stock prices back and compare them. And also for some stupid reason, we can like stocks. I have no idea what that even means. But yeah, that's it. And you can go ahead and submit that. And we can see that it passed before, but this is definitely completed now. And you can go ahead and move on to the next challenge.